Hello everybody and welcome to this tutorial in which I'm going to show you how we can take a gray block of an architectural space which I remodeled, add materials, add lights, and then create some quite nice looking recreations of that reference photo, what you see on the right side. We will cover topics like adding materials, proper UV unwrapping, and then placing the lights, so for example LED strip lights, as you can see on the left and right side, how to create the holes for recess lighting, putting then a light source in it, and we are adjusting of the light property, color, and uh, radius. Get very close to the reference photo, for example. And then we will finish this with creating a nice environment and placing cameras, so for example to create a nice perspective rendering, or as well for documentation purpose create an orthographic camera. So we can render this out like a really nice two-dimensional image. Okay, with all that said, let's get going. And by the way, the download link for the raw file including all the textures is inside the description of this video. Okay, let's get going. Let me first explain the demo file. As you can see, the majority of the property is already built. We have the, a little bit of the interior, majority of all the exterior stuff. We have the logo, we have a lot of architectural details, for example, the paneling, then the entrance area, including, for example, all the interior and exterior, kind of like the door and uh, window construction. Upper right corner in this file, we also have the reference photo, which will help actually as a study guide. This was photographed nearly before it became fully dark. Now we can see a little bit of the sky. And what really works well is if we pay attention to how the lights which are being used for this architectural piece are interacting and where it's also placed. For example, the rim lights are really nice, vertical and below. And because the brickwork here has kind of like a, a three-dimensional quality, you can also see these shadow lines, which are really quite nice. And then we also have clearly and identifiable the recessed lights. They very brightly illuminate the entrance area compared to the rest. Now and then we can look a little bit into that space. Okay, so let's actually start working with the colors first. The engine to start with, to make everything a little bit faster, can be Eevee. So let's work on the strip lights we have. So we need to have a light on the left side, right side, and at the bottom. So we will simply go ahead and add an area light. Then I can switch to bonding box, uh, move this over, and then I want to adjust the scale of this light. Let's go to lights properties. This is an area light. We will turn this into a rectangle. Now why we can set this maybe to 0.5 of an inch. My scene currently works in metric, so you see it converts it automatically. Or if you don't want to work with the metric, now you can just switch it here. Very good. Okay, let's go back. I will rotate this light a little bit, so I press N. Here's the rotation, so 90 degrees, very good. And go to this view, move this over. It might make sense to go into wireframe mode so I can better see where everything is. There we are. Okay, can move this back. And then this can go very close to it. Beautiful. Maybe a little bit up. And then we have to adjust the other uh, dimension. So this one. You see how I'm just scaling this one. Yeah, looks like this. So let's say 600. Very good. Then move this a little bit back. And you see this area light shines a light 
strictly to the left side. It actually has to face kind of like where this uh, green arrow is. So we need to rotate this minus 90. Okay. Because now the light will actually shoot or emit the light against the wall. Uh, Z and wireframe. I'm just making sure the light is not inside the wall. Beautiful. Okay. I can press Shift D, move a light over to here, go to there. And logically, this is smaller. So maybe 400 centimeters. Yeah, this is still too big. 300. This is better. And then uh, I have to pay attention to, so here roughly it ends. So this can be a little bit lower. Now be careful when you move your mouse to, onto the light, you see that um, we are going to adjust the light. So I'm moving the light with this widget here. And then this can still be made smaller. There, actually, that will basically kind of like do it. Okay, very good. Let's go to the world. We turn the light off and then we can turn on the rendering. Okay, so then now we can see how actually the two light strips are illuminating that space. Let's turn this off. We can select this one, go to the front view. We can press Shift D, move this one down, Z and wireframe. R and what is it? Minus 90 and we move this one right under this latch to here. Very good. There. Can try to center this a little bit. So I'm moving this along the Y axis and then the lamp here again, I make nice and white there. Okay, very good. See and rendered. There we are. Now this is Eevee. Now you see um, the light shapes are kind of like there, but the illumination when we do a final rendering will look different. So when I quickly switch to cycles, and there you can see, you know, this looks way more realistic. Also how this uh, bounces. Everything in the scene is already set up. So we have the viewport uh, sampling to 10 and uh, denoising to 10. Final rendering, yeah, since we're dealing with textures, later 400, for example, could be good. Okay, yeah, this actually no, doesn't, look, doesn't look too bad. So if we now select a light and then play with the strength. So for example, 50, 50 and select this one also 50. There you can see how the stronger the light, the more emission we're giving. And that's actually why having reference photos or doing this type of um, recreational exercise is really useful because it can tell you how bright actually a light maybe only has to be. Because everything what we do here in digital rendering is more suggestive anyway. Good. Okay. Now this looks pretty good. Let's go back for fast rendering to Eevee. And now the next thing to do is kind of how do we do these recessed lights? Maybe there. So we have one, two, three, four, five, six. Okay. So I will add actually a small cylinder. There we are. Can make this 64, that's fine. The diameter radius, let's say diameter four inches. The height can be 10 inches. Very good. Yeah, this looks fine. And Z and wireframe. And then I G and move this one over. I will give this an array modifier. I want to have six copies and then they should go this opposite way. Actually, I might like to have them perfectly positioned. So I will make 
eight copies. And I move this one to here. So you see it's on this edge. And then I can adjust this distance till it's also on this edge. Very good. Now you have one, two, three, four, five, six. I press Shift D and X, move my copy over and simply line this up. There we are. Change this to six and this previous model I move there. This was just only placeholder. And then this I will move right into the body. There, you move this up. It cannot be only inside, it needs to at least at the bottom stick through. This is the kind of like the opening we're going to cut into this piece. Very good. So we can set, say here, spotlight cut if you want to. Okay, I hide this one. Actually, also turn this off so it does not um, render. And then with the house selected, we go to Boolean, difference, select the building, and oh, I mean, that was kind of funny what I did. I cut the building with the building. Uh, here in object now, I type in spotlight, and there we are, spotlight cut, selected, and there we have the holes, beautiful. So, with this done, if I click on this one, maybe make this visible. Now you see here, you now I can select them, move them a little bit further in. And if I turn them off again, they're gone. So perfect. So into these openings now, I can, for example, put some spotlights in. So Z and wireframe, shift A, add a spotlight. G, move this over, and then I very loosely simply position it in there from the side view. Go to there, very good. And then uh, Option Alt D and X. There we are, maybe select two. Option uh, or Alt D and X, move this over. And one more time. So now we make linked or cloned lights, which means I adjust a light one time, and then actually all the other lights will be adjusted too. So 50, there we see this now, 80, 200, and um, there are the spotlights. We can also adjust the blend. So for example, it's nice and soft or change it to zero. If you've should be really harsh. Okay, beautiful. Let's do a quick cycles test. And there we see it looks actually not too bad. Now if I go to here, there we can see I'm getting close to something what we have there. The spotlight in my case is much lower when where it starts on the wall than actually in the reference. Um, we'll, go, we'll go to there just in a moment. Okay, so the with a spotlight we can simulate basically a light that is inside a housing. But now we actually made that housing. So what we can do is we simply turn this into a point light. Oh, look at that, is that now? There are already, it changed a little bit. So Z and wireframe, I will select um, all these lights, there we are. Uh, render and then if I move this down you see how exactly now the cone actually comes up. This makes sense the light bulb is now not surrounded by anything it can illuminate everything if we start putting this into the opening there it is. Now there's a point light it's very sharp if we give this let's say two inch of an irradius then or one inch, you will see that this gets nice and soft, similar to here. G and Z, let's move this further up. And there, see? Maybe uh, 0.5 of an inch. Cool. 
Okay, that's pretty nice. That works really good. Okay. Let's go back actually to Eevee. We have the, the window geometry. No, um, I simply have them in the file, but we're not going to use them for rendering. So I don't have to deal with any glass material or so. That actually accelerates the rendering a little bit. But what I would like to do is I want to have light that's inside this, this space. So how do we do this? Well, that's pretty simple. I um, just add a light, bring this light into the room, kind of like maybe centered here. There we are. And I can move this one up, Z and rendered. Not much is really happening ah, because that thing is really dim. 2000, and there we are. There we see a lot more. And there you can see now actually how the light from the inside comes to the outside. Maybe a quick cycles check to play with the strength. And there we are. It actually also creates some really nice uh, shadows here. So, 10 centimeters of a radius to soften that a little bit. And this could also be an area light or so, a point light. Doesn't really matter because all I want is just half the space actually filled with light and then it's emitting to the outside. And if I now actually move further away and take a look at my reference photo, there now we can start seeing we're getting close to their rebuilding. Now this illumination left and right at the bottom and then all the stuff that's happening on the inside. These are actually a tick too strong. So now I can lower this maybe a little bit. And this light strip is really long and it has 20 watts. This light strip is smaller and has 20. That means the same amount of energy is emitting from a smaller surface. So let's set this to 10 maybe. But it looks like it's 50% of the height that actually kind of like works better. Okay, not bad. Goody. Z and solid. Let's take a look at our logo here. Kind of funny, Burlington. And because of the heart, my daughter, when she was younger, always thought that was the Valentine store. So this is actually a plastic surface and there are light emitting elements behind. So it's during the evening, it's glowing. And we can do exactly the same. So let's make a material. And we can call this one um, logo site if we want to. And you can see here, this is kind of darkish. So let's make this a dark color maybe 0.2 for the roughness and it's also reflective normal perfect then we're going to edit mode i go to a side view zoom in press z and wireframe press b and then i select all these faces no z in solid mode these faces i would like to give that red glow so new material uh, so new slot new material logo light and assign okay now we can select for example that uh, color uh, object mode z and rendered hmm. don't really see much because well um, we assigned this material to the color but not to the emission click and drag and then give this one and there it is now it emits light actually. We can play with the strength logically to turn this really into something super bright. Uh, now you can see this is very bright or white because of the energy it's emitting and you see the rest is actually nicely tinted. Um, this only really glows a little bit so something like one kind of like is fine. Okay. We can control C this color and then I will actually go to this uh, logo here, there, and say logo color and paste this one in. There we are. Cool. And maybe make this 
nice and glossy. Very nice. Okay, cool. So, we basically have most of the, the lights added right now. Um, the light color is another element now we, we should tackle and be um, co conscious about. Because as you can see, this is not just white. Light really has a color. So the downside is with Eevee, when we work with the color notes, we don't really see this with Eevee, but we can see this actually in cycles. So adjusting the colors, maybe not something we can, um, we can only do when we actually with, uh, with cycles, when we switch to EV, then the lights will be white, but we go back to cycles, the colors will be the way how they should be. Okay, so let's do that. So I have this light actually selected and then I say use notes. And you see now here also, we have this, this note where we, there we are. And we simply add the black body. There we are, and that should be 5,000. Okay. And can go to here, use notes, and exactly the same. And there you can see does these lights already are way more yellowish. Let's go to here, same thing. And also for the spotlights, so here are point lights, we do the same. And there we are. Beautiful. Now this feels actually much warmer, more realistic, not so computer generated sterile and cold. Okay. We at this point can also work with the the world to set this up. So with the um, here we can then switch to the world display of the notes. It's maybe easier to do here. Then add texture and we're going to work with the sky texture. Put this in there. There we are. Z and rendered. Okay, S strength here is actually at zero. That's the reason why we don't see anything. Put this to one and we it's really bright. So let's actually get the, the sun down. And there we are. Okay, where is the sun actually? Yeah, oh, it's actually right behind it. Good, can go to a side view, go to perspective and then move this one down. And I'm just trying to match, for example, the color. Keep in mind, this photo is done with an iPhone, so the colors are adjusted right after I snapped the, the photo. So the, the sky wasn't as bluish as it is inside this image, but it looks actually really nice, which is the reason why I'm using it. And now you see here I'm playing with some of these values with a little bit more of ozone. Now I get a little bit more of a, a nice um, bluish tint into it. Okay, very good. There we are. Okay, what else can we do? Because we work with the lights in architectural space, what really will start making uh, or visually interesting is the bump mapping and the texturing. So we have all the materials actually for this design here too. So let's go ahead. We will start texturing everything now. Now we will create a new material and let's say this is our stucco. Then we will add an image and open textures. And here's their uh, stucco plaster and open. And this will actually be now visible uh, nearly everywhere in the moment. This geometry has no UV mapping, so we have to UV unwrap this first. When you go to edit mode, you see all these faces here are already selected. If not, go ahead and select all those. Zack, 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 zack. 
that's all I want. And then I press U for unwrap. And now you can see actually there is that stucco material. Right click and say split vertical and then we can go into UV editor. There you can see actually the individual faces. We can rotate them if we want to our 90, um, bring them to here. So yeah, it's all good. I mean, it doesn't really matter much. And here we go to object and I would like to scale the texture. So we go to add input texture coordinates, drag this one out. Then we type in mapping, there we are. And then we connect this to there. And 30, yeah, 30 seems to look kind of, kind of good. Okay, beautiful. Let's go ahead and do a quick rendering. Now, I don't really see much because there isn't really much light. So let's maybe add a point light somewhere. There we are. Getting this a little bit in front there, bring this up. And then I can zoom in a little bit. Okay, there you can see it. So when you zoom in there, you will see actually the details. And because we are using the denoising, when you zoom out, some of these details will actually um, be denoised away. As you also can see here, this is kind of very mushy. So that's the reason why we have a higher sampling. So we see these details later. Okay, we zoom in again, and there we are. And here now what I would like to do is add also this little bit of structure to it. So I can select these two and G, move this to the side, drag out of normal, then I type in bum, there we are. And then the color goes into the height. And then here, point 0.1, and we add a little bit of bump mapping to it. So if I remove the texture, what you would what you see is basically the bump mapping effect. But now this is very fine. The denoising is blurring this out, but we will see this later in final rendering. Anyway, this process we're going to continue using now. So I delete this light. Um, I zoom out a little bit, maybe to make things a little bit easier, let's add simply a sun. There we are. Let me rotate this a tick. Yeah, <laughs> we have more light now. Let's texture actually the front area. So I will go into edit mode, and then I will select your yeah, kind of like this geometry piece. Can go to top view. I press uh, not yet you and unwrap, but because I want to first select actually a new slot, make a new material. Let me call this walkway. Um, then we go image and open, and here that's actually this image, the limestone. Also here we don't see anything. So you and unwrap, there we are. This is the wrong image. So let's go to limestone, there we are. And assign, oh, I didn't hit assign. So now there we kind of like can see this. Pretty big, so same deal here. I can drag this one out and say mapping. So there we are, and add texture coordinates there, and probably here maybe four times for tiling it. Oh, let's go eight times. Yeah, eight times looks kind of okay. 
For the texturing, actually, it's really fine to use Eevee because it's blazing fast and we can see the, the changes much better without that uh, rendering and denoising jazz we have to deal with. Okay, so this is good. Um, here, these two I move to the site. I make a copy of this one. Then I will connect actually the vectors. So I say also here, this the UV unwrapping used for the mapping and then these two images are being adjusted. And here now we will load the bump image. The color space will be non-color. And then drag this one out, we can type in bump. Uh, so go into height, yes. And then suck into there. And maybe 0.1, point 0.2. We here drag this one out. There you can see the bump mapping effect. Okay. Let's go actually to the, the rest of the geometry. So we have this, 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 and then this one. Here we make a new material. And there's a slot, there's a material, a sign, and this is actually um, brick. Let's make brick pick. Um, we want to have an image, an open, and that's actually this one here. All these brick images, by the way, are created with the website called architecture.org. It's pretty awesome. There we are. Very good. And then now we do this same thing here again. There we are. And mapping there, go in. We have to UV unwrap this, U and unwrap. I will actually here load this image. There we are. So you see this is rotated. So R and 90, I rotate this and then I move this to here and press S and scale this one up. So till it really, yeah nearly has the correct height. So this texture was created with really the four layers um, of um, brickwork. And then I have here one, Im I pressed L actually, these are two different pieces, L. G, move this to there and there. And then I can press A, move this to the center. So this is basically the two, geometry strips, and then I simply scale this one up. And there, now you see we have four, perfectly. Okay, very good. Also here, bump mapping. There we are. Let's make a copy. We load the bump map. And, oh, this is actually the bump map. Well, well that's the texture. Okay, good. And then, same deal. Now, there we see really like, look at this. How nicely this looks actually. The structure with it looks kind of flat. Yeah, without it looks flat with it. Well, it looks more realistic. And even here you see like how the light works with the texture to create these illuminations. And then let's do actually our brick work here. New material slot, new material, brick, and assign, image, open, there we are, very good. Same thing again. And 
and let's load this one here where there it is okay go to this view you and unwrap there we are so this one is wrong i press l r and 90 and rotate it very good and now i want to do one thing so i select this corner point and i zoom in and i move i move it so i see this corner is changing means which means this point is really this point okay and here yeah the same so perfect that means a a l I line up those very closely, press A, and then I simply scale this up as precisely as possible height-wise, and then I move this into this corner up there. Click this one, L, G, and I perfect them, and T, and I put that 3D curver, actually, Shift S, wait, no, wrong click this point shift s cursor to select it that position it now and now i can go to 3d cursor it's actually a 2d cursor in uv press s and now i scale from this corner point you see this no there perfect really good okay um these are really massive bricks the um, architecture.org tool didn't allow to make um, the pattern I needed but it made it half of it so all I need is just increase the, the tiling so the scale and now I have exactly the correct uh, dimension for the bricks and you start noticing that with these textures these renderings start to look really nice there we are And height, suck, and there, point one, very good. Beautiful, okay. Um, two more materials. Let's make another slot. I will go into edit mode. I will select this face here. And then here in the slot, new material. Um, stone detail and image and open that's this one you and unwrap and you can find image actually by pressing the the letter so t and again same thing just put this in there oh i have to assign it there we are beautiful cool the texture was actually created really to the dimension of that wall so that is actually kind of it we could technically speaking ignore this piece because we're not changing the mapping in in any way there and then shift d connect this open the bump image there we are change the color so it's really like black, black and white if you want to think about it this way and then the bump Point one. So this is a very high glossy material. So here we can maybe lower this point one. So it's nice and glossy. For the the brick, you are it's based on what material it is, point three. So it's a little bit of glossiness and roughness for the, the stucco, for example. Nah, it doesn't really have any reflectivity. So we lower all this. The walkway, the walkway that's kind of concrete. Now the roughness we could keep. We can lower this there. Okay. And here, this uh, other brickwork. Yeah, it doesn't really have much 
much here. So, perfect. Okay, very nice. The last thing is actually the, the red part, the arc. So, call this maybe red arc. And I simply copy this logo, Control C, Mac and PC are the same, Control V to paste. Then I go into edit mode and I select these faces. There we are. Also the inside. Uh, maybe uh, let's do that one too. And then we assign that. Okay. This one can be actually nice, high, glossy. Okay, let's save. Um, right click join, we can close this and let's take a look how this feels like with cycles. It's actually not bad, no? So we can also delete the, the sun if we don't want to have it. And now essentially we only can see the space nicely during the night. Um, here I will go back to my reference photo. Keep in mind, this is illuminated also because of the street lights, now, which are out there. You can really see this here, it's brighter compared to out there. But when well, we actually created a really nice representation of that space, we can increase the, um, the brightness a little bit by, for example, moving the, the sun up, putting this maybe back to one, and then just trying to find something that, for example, can look or matches kind of like what we are uh, desiring. And the last thing we maybe for this type of presentation to look into is the space inside is kind of empty. So what can we quickly do? I don't want to draw too much attention to it, but we need to have something there. Okay, so let's do this. Go to top view, shift A. We will add a cube. This cube is 200 by 200 by 200. Um, I move this one up, let's say to kind of here. So X, maybe 100, and then Y, we make 600. And bring this in there, maybe. And then Alt D and X, Alt D and X, Alt D and X, and just move them things around. So these are, think about like shelves or so. Alt H, Z, and render it. And there you can see, you know, there is, for example, something going on on the the inside. Very good. So let's now find actually a nice position for the camera. So this actually looks pretty, pretty good. Wow, look at how beautiful like the color bleeding is here. So we can create a light. So uh, sorry, a camera, shift a camera don't really have a camera else there it is and i like this view and i can go now and say align view there uh, active camera to view so now the camera was moved right to where we were standing and g z z yeah g z so do you press z twice and we can move the camera backwards Oh, well, there we can, for example, frame that space. Okay. Go to top view, Z and solid. You can sh press Shift D, move this camera to here, N. Um, this is zero. Yep, this is zero. This is 90. Okay. I'm cleaning up this a little bit. 90 and a zero so the camera is nice horizontal um what height is this 1.8 yeah, that's kind of like six feet i can look through this camera by pressing Control zero or say active 
active object as camera. There we are. And Z and rendered. Now we don't have anything in the foreground. That's kind of silly. So in this case here, we simply do a, sh a shift, move this up. There we are. And actually here, I will go to the 3D viewport, go to the top. And then I can move this camera further away. Move this further up. Uh, so I align this, for example. Okay. And because I have multiple cameras, now I can switch to individual views very easily. Also here, let's move this one up. So the foreground is nicely covered. Pretty cool. Okay. Actually, I just realized there is, uh, oh, I don't have this in here. So the, um, the walls are actually pretty empty. So if we want, we can also add, for example, um, kind of like um, a light that's actually going up and down. The, the wall, so shift A, and then I will add actually a circle. There we are. Go into 64, go into edit mode, point, scale this one down. In object mode, we could say that should be maybe 30 inches. Uh, let's go 20 inches. Yeah, very good. Bring this to here, bring this to there, bring this to there, bring this up. Then I go back into edit mode. I go to top view, Z and wireframe, A, A, B, and select everything above the center. X, delete it, select all this, and F. So you see, I know I have half a circle. A, Z, and um, no, sorry, press E for extrude and then Z to go straight down. And we could say this one should be you know, 20 centimeters. Actually, let's make this 60 centimeters just as a test. Then we can bring this very close to the wall. That's, I think, roughly here. No, wait, there. Line this up maybe with this upper edge. I move this up, hold control and snap to that point. Shift S, cursor to select it. Shift A, add a point light. Bring this in there. Go to here, bring this light to there. And then here, use nodes. Um, black body 5000 now z and render no nope, there we have it okay so if we um go ahead and say well maybe 10 it's stronger we can also here again change the radius to make this for example softer and then inside this housing, when we move the light up and down, you can see how we are creating um, different light patterns. Logically, again, the more it's to an opening, the more light can escape. The more light is actually away from an opening, the more we funnel or direct that light, which also means if we scale this light down, so the light body, um, and then where is that lamp actually? There it is. Z and wireframe. Let's put this into the center. Z and render. There. Now you have a really nice left and right triangular shadow and the, the light is actually coming out from there. Yeah, beautiful. Cool. So, um, we add one more camera. 
Um, this camera is there. That's perfect. So we move this one back, move this one to here. In this camera, we will set to orthographic. And then also here for this rendering, I would like the film to be transparent. Then I would like to look through that camera. There we are. And then here I can move this camera to there. See the that actually doesn't do anything. This is an orthographic camera, distance doesn't matter. So here we will work with the scale. The only thing that matters is where it is it positioned left and right, up and down. Cool. Okay. Z and render. So there you see with this film being transparent, you actually cut away the surrounding. So this way we can make a, a nice um, other graphic rendering. And if I select the other cameras, which are perspective, and I say set active camera or go to here, set active camera, there you see everything actually um, is back to perspective view. And then when you do the final rendering, um, I will set this one to 50%. There we are. And I go to this one, control zero, quickly switch to there. And we will set the, the samples to 200. And I will render this now. So it's rendering, there we are. So when I take a look into the the rendered image, there we are. Um, where is the render result? There it is. There we can see how we have the background run. So if we go now and save as PNG with RGBA, then we have a transparent background. And if we do not want actually the background to be cut out, well, then we simply don't make the background transparent. Click render. And there we are. And then this we can export. I just realized that I forgot to um, point out how we can simulate the street lights. Well, it's actually very easy to do. Now we see the sky is kind of dark and the front of the space is actually illuminated. And when I turn the rendering on, I set actually my, my world environment back. So it looks a little bit similar color wise to what I want. Well, this is like really dark. Well, there are parking lamps. Well, all we need to do is just add some lights to that area. So to do this, I will right click here and then say split vertical, go to your top view, uh, shift A, add a point light. And I have the light kind of here. The street parking lights are pretty high, so maybe kind of there. Yeah, and then I can try and see. So 500, how much light do I need to give this point light? to give this enough power to very gently brighten up that area. Now we see actually that, well, where that one is with 2000 is kind of like very close. Um, Alt D and X, move the second one over, maybe Alt D and X, move one at the center. Now we have three, that's definitely way too bright. So if I lower this lamp, lowers the light of all the other lamps, and now we're get, getting actually very close to what I photographed. Now again, this is why it's really useful when you want to do these types of renderings, to photograph stuff. So you have references of how they look when you want to rebuild them. Okay, that's really it now. This looks actually pretty good.
Good job, class. Thank you.